Hi everyone. If you are involved in any kind of academic writing, whether it's at undergraduate level, postgraduate level, a thesis and honors, uh, MPhil or a doctorate, this video is for you. In this video, I will give you some tips on how to go about the academic writing, how to improve on it and to avoid making some basic mistakes which no one wants to see, especially examiners or reviewers or even your lecturers. So let's get started. So the first tip I will give you today is that avoid using colloquial language. What do you mean by colloquial language? That means language that we use in our everyday life. For example, the sentence you might be wanting to write is that there is tons of research. But instead of saying tons of research, we say there is sufficient research or adequate research. So tons is a word that we may use in colloquial language or in a very specific context. But when we are writing academic English, we don't use the word there is tons of research. Or if you say that, oh, I found uh, this particular research to be awesome or fascinating. We don't say that. We can say this research was significant or it made a significant contribution to my area. Something like that. So try avoiding using the colloquial language in academic English. Another example here is that avoid using acronyms. For example, you may want to write the word boulevard as W B L V D, which is an acronym or a short version or an abbreviation of the same word. But do not write that. Write the full word such as boulevard or corporation. There are of course certain acronyms we use, which is very uh, particular to the area of research that we are doing. In that case, the first time you use the acronym, make sure you expand on it so that the readers can understand what you would mean by that acronym. But that acronym should be very particular to the trade or the area of research that you are doing, something that is popularly used by academics, not something that we use in our everyday life, such as the examples I've given you is Mr. or New York or miles per hour, so on and so forth. Also avoid using slang words. Often people will not understand what you mean by slang. So in Australia, we use words like daggy. That's a slang. Daggy means unkept or it means unclean or not properly presented. So instead of using the word daggy, we should use the word you know, not presented properly or this is in terms of physical appearance I'm talking about. Or there are other slang words in every language, every country, every culture. Avoid using slang words like that. All right. Uh, also avoid using contractions. Contractions is the example that I've given you on your screen is when we combine two words which are not supposed to be combined in academic English. For example, is not cannot be written as isn't. You should try to use is not. Uh, so have not or instead of haven't. So these are these are these are contractions that you should use in academic English. So don't use isn't write is not or haven't write have not you get the idea the next tip i want to give you is of course on uh, internalizing the debate so how do you internalize the debate so when you are writing academic english uh, you try to present the point of view of uh, different stakeholders so don't only present your point of view or the point of view you are interested in you try to present the point of view of different uh, stakeholders because that shows that you have a knowledge of that topic and that you have studied the topic from different points of view to get a good understanding of it and then you are choosing to take a stand. So how do you internalize the debate? You can start by saying, uh, writing sentences like um, uh, you know some will argue that or one interpretation of this could be or however this could be taken as or this is not to say that or possible interpretations include so when you are when you are presenting um, a point of view uh, which you may be agree with uh, you also need to present the point of view of others and the way you do that is by these examples that i've shown you of course there could be many more examples but the idea behind it is that all examiners all reviewers all assessors lecturers they want to see that you've had a you have a holistic understanding of the topic you understand the topic from different points of view and uh, you may agree or may not agree with it but it is important for you to present it and then uh, give your supporting points or points that you don't agree with 
but have to present it and this is the way you present it in academic english the other one is that you have to make your own contribution very clear very evident very explicit so that the reader will know that uh, not only have you read research not only have you borrowed from other ideas or other researchers but you have also been able to join the ideas together link them together and present something that you have come up with an original contribution this is particularly very uh, important when it comes to a thesis but it is also important in maybe academic assignments depending on what your lecturer expects to see from you so here you can write sentences like this is a contribution in the sense that or this is what i have found and you know your finding you write your finding first and then say this is a contribution in the sense that maybe it adds to the definition of a term or it adds to the uh, value it presents to the stakeholders so or you can write sentences like uh, this is a contribution to the extent that so the examples i have given you here is for example this study will contribute to the growing literature on social network and activity travel behavior or this study will contribute to further endeavors of more potent inhibitors or something like that so you also have to make sure that you justify on what evidence or basis you are making these claims so that's why i said first write down the finding uh, so the finding has to be based on some data or some um, theoretical analysis or some desktop research where you have been able to connect the ideas presented by other people or you have been able to conduct experiments collect data and you are uh, establishing the findings or claiming something based on that data so based on that data of course you identify the gaps you number your contributions uh, you look at your contribution through a theoretical lens uh, that will give you a theoretical framework to carry out some kind of a data collection and 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 also you can highlight the real world benefits so if your research has real world benefits practical implications that people out there in the real world in the industry in the corporates in the organizations can use then of course your research becomes more popular and people will read about your research more but make sure that in your paper you very clearly uh, explain what your contribution is and how you have drawn either from other research or by your own data uh, you also have to be very consistent in defining the concepts so that means that you have to use the same terminology and words when you are explaining something for example when you say students in a research paper so don't then use the word candidates or participants because the reader is now confused what do you mean by students what do you mean by candidates what do you mean by participants so if you have called somebody students then you should use the word students for them or you should explain if you are calling them participants in research that at the point when you are calling them participants you should clearly explain that students will now be called participants because they participated in research but you should be very clear but you know do not use different terms to explain the same concept or the same uh, the same construct uh, for example in this case is of course the word student should not be confused with the word candidates or participants right similarly uh, jargon should be explained uh, jargon should be explicitly defined for example medical jargon explains the word acute as a condition that comes on suddenly and uh, acute angles in geometry means angles less than 90 degrees so even the word acute uh, depending on the context in which you are using should be explained because there could be some jargon uh, and when we say jargon we mean that terminology that is used in your trade your industry your area of research it may be very popular in your area of research um, whereas that may not be the case in other areas for example in education we have the term authentic assessment so the term authentic uh, assessment may mean very clearly it may mean to you what it means to in education so authentic assessment means assessing students in real world context making them do tasks uh, that are applicable in the real world but the word authentic may be Uh, confused by others if they do not if they are not explained if it is not explained to the reader they may get confused with the term authentic itself because authentic can be used in different settings so the example you can see on your screen is the word jeans may be confused with the um, uh, cloth jeans right Uh, the next one i want to give you guys is uh, the tip is that you must use lot of verbs uh, in your sentences so how verbs help us is firstly verbs help us to explain the stance we are taking so you may have read a lot of research and you will present a lot of research done by other people but including verbs 
explains the stance that you are taking so you know i believe or uh, you know uh, this is what should be done or this is uh, this clearly outlines or something like that that uh, this is your stance it it also helps you to paraphrase uh, quote somebody else's research that uh, you know so and so and so stevens 2017 found uh, uh, so and so so finding is an uh, paraphrasing so you are paraphrasing somebody else's uh, use lot of references to make it very clear as to what was your finding and what is the finding of somebody else so that you are not accused of plagiarism or cheating so a example i have given you here is that abraham um, maybe mentions that culture shock has long been understood as a primary psychological phenomena so the letters 34 here refer to a reference in your reference list or or steven outlines the four stages of mitosis so outlining uh, mentioning all these are verbs and here you are making it very clear as to who has done it and if you take the stance then of course you should say that you know this research or the research paper here uh, discusses so these are the ways you show uh, what has been done by others and what has been done by you then be very careful while using words uh so example don't use any kind of unnecessary or superfluous words for example uh, if you say this research makes a major substantial and noteworthy contribution uh, there are three words basically describing the same thing so instead of that you can write this research makes a significant contribution so the word significant pretty much replaces major substantial and noteworthy all right uh, do not use any kind of stereotypes or generalizations for example you cannot say social media is the major cause of distraction in all fifth graders so when you say all fifth graders you are generalizing you are assuming that all the fifth graders in all over the world or in a particular country or in a particular even classroom uh, are distracted by social media they may not be or that the social media is the major cause of distraction if you say that you have to uh, make sure that you do a comparison of the distractions so you cannot use uh, words like that uh, which generalize it to the whole population or the whole concept so social media is the major cause of distraction uh, major cause uh, how do you define that or when you say all fifth graders how can you know it is in all fifth graders uh, then do not take away attention of the reader from the topic itself for example you may say there are many benefits of regular exercising on weight loss however high intake of water and healthy diet can have similar effects now when you say there are many benefits of regular exercising on weight loss first explain what benefits you are talking about because if that is the topic of your uh, writing then that is what you should expand on and then use a separate paragraph to explain how high intake of water and healthy diet can also have similar effects but when you combine these two sentences the reader has not yet processed what are the benefits of regular exercising but before that you have introduced a new topic that high intake of water and healthy diet can also have similar effects now you have to first explain how what are the benefits of regular exercising in terms of weight loss and then maybe make a separate section a separate paragraph so guide the reader through do not distract them do not introduce too many ideas at the same time that the reader gets confused as to what the paper is all about so similarly do not use any kind of uh, abstract terms a uh, concepts to be explained T uh, you know take readers from familiar from non familiar to a familiar zone so do not expect your readers to understand everything that you write about they may be from the industry but still you have to uh, lay out the map in such a way that they feel comfortable there is a flow to your writing so when you say micro credentials offer value to its earners employers and tertiary education providers uh, make sure you explain what do you mean by micro credentials first instead of saying micro credentials offers value so you may think that oh people reading my work should be from my industry and they will know but uh, no uh, sometimes the same word can have different meaning to you from what the reader or the examiner or the reviewer may think so so you have to make, make it very clear as to what you mean by the terms and terminologies that you are using um, unless of course they are universal for example you don't have to explain the word benefit what i mean is the main constructs or the main concepts of your uh, research writing should be explained to people do not assume they understand the words so even when you write the word value uh, that value should be explained what do you mean by value uh, you know value for money or is it value for the you know the benefit that it has on the real world so make sure that these terms and terminologies are explained so the reader goes from completely non familiar to becoming familiar so you are guiding the reader through the concepts so that they can follow your writing they can follow your research
Uh, my final exam, my final tip is that use examples very carefully. Don't just copy and paste ideas. So, for example, here you have, you know, I, the example I've given you is that Thomas 2020 found a significant correlation between spicy diet and indigestion problems in the Indian community. And then you go on to write, say, hence I will replicate the same research in my study of the British expatriates in India. Now, this is just copy and pasting ideas. Now, Thomas found a significant correlation between spicy diet and indigestion in the Indian community. That doesn't mean that uh, you will think that the same research will work uh, or the same idea will work when you are studying the British expatriates in India. The British expatriates in India may not be even having Indian food in India. They may be having the same um, kind of food that they were having in the UK. So first you have to establish why that problem is relevant and how does Thomas's study become relevant to your study. So you have to form that connection. Don't just copy somebody's idea and paste it. That's not genuine research. That's not original research. It may work in undergraduate level, but not at the postgraduate or not at the honors thesis or post PhD level. Also do not plunge the unprepared readers into middle of the problem. So for example, if you say the use of simulators have helped airline pilots prepare to deal with emergency scenarios, hence this research study will investigate advantages and disadvantages of using simulators uh, for training and assessing nurses. Doing so will improve the overall academic achievement of the students. Now, the reader is not really uh, understanding what is the problem with the current use of or current current training and um, training or problems with nursing uh, why do you have to introduce simulators uh, so explain the problem first before you say that i'm going to do this and this will improve the overall academic achievement why do you think this will improve the overall academic achievement you have to guide the reader so you have to make it uh, very systematic logical so first you have to explain what was the problem with the training and education of nurses why the simulators are required and then explain okay the use of simulators have found benefits in other industries and these industries have something in common with the nursing industries and that is why you are using going to study the use of simulators so set it up in a way that the reader understands okay because sometimes when we do a lot of reading and when we are writing the problem and the issues and solutions may be very clear in our head but it will not be clear in the reader's head because for the reader it is a new document so when you're presenting your research you know it's like drawing a map for the reader and giving them guidance they know exactly how to go about it so in the map what happens in a map is the in the map when we see a google map when we see a map on the phone we know how to go about uh, the roads so that we can reach our destination that is a similar thing that you have to do when you write a paper you have to guide the reader through the whole paper so that they do not get lost with what with what you're talking about so explaining the terms slowly leading them from a non-familiar to a familiar territory setting up the problem then showing that why your solution works in other contexts and why it will work in your context uh, this is the way you guide the reader through all right so guys let me know if there's something i missed or there's something that you want to add the whole idea behind this paper or these videos are that we can learn from one another i'm dr sam ghosh and i would love to hear from you thank you for watching thank you for subscribing to my channel and bye for now